We are so glad that you are joining with us in worship today, whether you're at home or here in the sanctuary, as we praise our God. Today, immediately following this service, will be our annual congregational meeting, so we invite you to stay immediately following the service here in the sanctuary. It will also be streamed live, but this live streaming of the meeting will not be archived as the worship services are. If you're worshiping with us at home today, we will be celebrating Holy Communion, so we invite you to have with you a small piece of bread and a small glass of juice that you might more fully participate in this sacrament. This afternoon, the women will be gathering in the fireside room at 2 o'clock for a Valentine craft event. So if you'd like to join, ladies, we'd love to have you there. We'll have the fireplace on. It should be cozy and a fun time together. So we hope to see you there. Cutters will be going to breakfast on Saturday at Polly's Pies on Atlantic at 9 o'clock. If you'd like to go to breakfast with other adults here from Covenant, you can see Mary Lou as you leave, or you can see me, that we might add your name to the reservations. Next Sunday is Super Bowl Sunday, but here we celebrate Super Bowl, S-O-U-P-E-R, Bowl Sunday, and the youth here at the church raise funds to help soup pots, to help tackle world hunger. So if you'd like to participate in that, you can bring food items that can be given to our pantry or you can make a financial donation. So please, next week, plan to come and participate in the Super Bowl here, Tackling Hunger. Rising Tide cordially invites you to an evening in Paris, Rising Tide style, on March 1st. Our fun fundraising event will take place at 6 o'clock. You can find out more details for that event and make your reservations online at risingtide at mkec.org. You can pick up a flyer as you leave or you can contact me. Let us now be called into worship. People greatly beloved by God, hear this word from God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us first and foremost rejoice in the Lord who made this day and made our lives and makes them better and better from one degree of glory to the other. Beloved of God, please pray with me. Eternal God of justice and righteousness, you give us 10,000 reasons to sing with thanksgiving in praise of you. You hear our cries and offer us salvation. You pile grace upon grace upon each day we live. And you again and again do many mighty and marvelous things for us. We therefore offer up ourselves to you in worship and pray that you would glorify yourself through us this day and all our days. And the people of God said, Amen. Let us now sing a paraphrase of Psalm 118. Please stand in God's honor if you are able.
be seated. Dear, precious children of God, let us pray once more. Great and good God, you deserve our praise and justify our defiant, sometimes delirious joy in you. Yet, we too often serve our ego before you, and too often in weak faith we succumb to despondency and despair. Forgive our failure to fulfill our call, to bring you glory, and to radiate the bright good cheer that comes from believing in you. Turn our lives around and empower us to set our lives in yours, that we might hope in you, rely on you, and find peace in you like a child at rest in its mother's arms from this time on and forevermore. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we are setting our focus on you, that we might hear your word anew and glean from it what you would have us glean this day. Open our ears to hear, our hearts to receive, and our souls to respond. In Jesus' name, amen. Our lesson today comes to us in the book of Psalms, Psalm 131. It's found on page 574 of the Old Testament portion of your pew Bible. I invite you now to listen to this God's holy word. O Lord, my heart is not lifted up. 
My eyes are not raised too high. I do not occupy myself with things too great and too marvelous for me. But I have calmed and quieted my soul like a winged child with its mother. My soul is like the weaned child that is with me. O oh, Israel, hope in the Lord from this time on and forevermore. Amen. Let us now respond to these words as we stand, if you are able, and all join in singing, For you, my God, I wait. presence of God, please be seated. Dear ones for whom Christ died. When she was 10 years old, Corey Ten Boom was riding the train to Amsterdam with her father who sold and repaired watches there. As they rolled down the tracks, she was reading a poetry book and came across the phrase, sex sin. In utter innocence, she turned to her father and asked, what's a sex sin? He studied her face, but didn't say anything. Then finally, he stood up, lifted off of the rack above their heads, his heavy work case, and placed it on the floor. He then asked Corey, would you please take that case off the train for me? She stood up and gave it a good tug. But it was weighed down so much by watches, spare parts, and tools, she couldn't 
even budget. It's too heavy, Papa, she said. Yes, I know. And it would be a poor father who let his little girl carry such a load. And so it is, Corey, with some knowledge. Some knowledge is too heavy for a child. One day you will grow up and be bigger and stronger, and then you shall carry it. But for now, you must trust me to keep it in trust for you. And that response satisfied little Corey completely. It was enough for her to remember that her father had the answers for that and every other question, and she was content to leave them in his keeping until the time was right. God, our Father, and His ways are very often mysterious, both because our God is so great and because we are still small, too small to understand much at all. We do well to rest content with leaving many questions in his keeping for the time being. David, the human co-composer of today's psalm, was a deeply spiritual man who knew God about as well as anybody did back then and who theologized about God and God's ways with insight and wisdom. Yet David realized that God is so far above all of us that he exceeds the reach of our mental grasp and his plans are so vast and complex that they defy human comprehension. Though David was grateful that he had come to know God truly and some of God's plans accurately, Though he knew all that, he knew that he knew God and God's plans incompletely. David exemplified that modesty of mind that arises from an appropriate awe over the greatness of God. Such modesty of mind admits limitations in its ability to understand God and, his, and God's ways. That's why David here prays, O oh Lord, my heart is not lifted up and my eyes are not raised too high. I do not occupy myself with things too great and too marvelous for me. David's modest acceptance of his ignorance, derived from his utmost reverence for God's magnificence. This man of strong faith made peace with his extensive agnosticism out of the keen awareness of how God is too big to fit into even the biggest human brain. And this modesty of mind brought David a happiness of heart 
That's why in this psalm, he compares himself to a weaned child lying in its mother's arms upon her breast. A weaned child is a child who has grown accustomed to food other than mommy's milk and thus doesn't fuss and fume about having it. A weaned child on mommy's breast can rest content just because she is there up close and personal. An unweaned child is often anything but calmed and quieted, to use the phrase David employs here. When hungry, an unweaned child is restless and noisy, raising a racket until it gets what it wants. By contrast, the weaned child is freed from an anxious preoccupation with mommy's milk and can just appreciate her apart from her possibly gratifying the child's desire. In other words, the weaned, weaned child has come to love the giver and not just the gifts the giver gives. This enables the weaned child to enter a new level of appreciation of mommy, for she is no longer just the one who satisfies needs, but a warm and wonderful person that having a close relationship with is plenty enough. Sometimes we, who are long past our childhood, reduce God to being no more than the meter of my needs. But if we get past our self-centered insistence on having what we want, when we want it, if we can just enjoy God for himself and not for what he might do for us, we can relate to God in a deeper and more delightful way. We can love God, the giver, and not just his gifts. We can, as never before, rejoice in God for who he is and not just what he's got for us. And that makes us with God like a weaned child with its mommy calmed and quieted and no, wanting no more than God's warm, intimate presence. This God who loves us. His nearness settles our soul into a serene modesty of mind and an uninhibited happiness of heart. We need nothing from God because truly we need nothing but God from whom all blessings flow. On his 39th birthday, Christian Wyman received the awful diagnosis that he was dying from an incurable blood cancer. That cancer eventually destroyed his ability to walk or to feed himself on his own. And it dragged him through such severe pain that, as he put it, Quote, it seemed to incinerate all my thoughts of God and leave me just sitting there in the ashes, utterly alone. Yet the horror of those experiences didn't kill off what faith Wyman had, but rather launched him on a journey that led him to know and appreciate God as never before. God never healed 
Wyman, but God did heal him from the need of being healed. For Wyman found in God's suffering servant, Jesus, the friend who could miraculously console and uplift him even when things got their worst. Wyman says he found joy and peace at all times by learning that because Jesus suffered at, to the utmost at Calvary, quote, God is with us, not beyond us in our suffering. And Wyman came to see that what seems to be, quote, the absolutely solitary nature of extreme pain, that is an illusion. Christ's suffering shatters the iron walls around an individual in their suffering. The weaned child of faith who rests upon the breast of God, the breast of this loving God who suffered for us and still suffers with us, that weaned child who stays present to God's presence without the demand for any deliverance but from distance between the two of them. That weaned child experiences the comforting and fortifying nearness of the good God who participates in the totality of our life from its best to its worst. The good God shares in everything we go through and thereby brings us happiness of heart in all circumstances. This side of the grave, God remains in so many ways a mystery. But God still remains a marvel of grace. This side of the grace, God's plans don't always add up on our computers or synchronize with our calendars, but God ever keeps calmed and quieted the souls of those who love him like a weaned child with its mother and puts at peace the heart of those whose mod modesty of mind enables them to trust God in even the worst times. That's why David says to us here and now what he once said to ancient Israel. Hope in the Lord from this time on and forevermore because ever and ever God is faithful and generous, gracious, and merciful. Let us then resolve to obey this command to hope in the Lord forever by always leaning on His everlasting arms. They're strong enough to support us and to see us through whatever life throws at us. Let us rejoice in hope. Let us pray as we listen to the morning anthem. Peace. 
loving arms of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is in those arms that we come to this table. It is in the love of God that we are invited here. Not because we've gotten it all right and we've made all the right choices and that we've always had our priorities right and always been humble before our Lord. But we come because the Lord loves us and wants us as we are to lean on him, to take in this meal. And it's not in the bread and the juice. It's our Lord Jesus Christ whom we encounter. It's his love and it's his peace and it's his presence. On the night in which the Lord was betrayed, he took bread and after giving thanks, he broke it and said, Take and eat, for this is my body, broken for you. And take and drink of this cup, for this is my blood shed for you. For as often as you eat this bread and you drink from this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord. This gift has been given to us that we might come to our God, that we might lean into our God, that we might be received into loving arms to prepare to take of this meal. Let us now sing together. sisters, friends in Christ, we are going to feast on milk and honey. We are going to feast on the bread of life. We are going to drink of the cup of salvation. 
You are invited to this table. All are welcome. Take and receive. You're invited now to open your cup and take of your bread and drink of the cup. This feast has been prepared for you, my friends. Blessed, let us pray. Thank you, high and holy God, gracious and merciful God, that you have nourished us and strengthened us with faith by this holy meal. By it, too, you have united us with Christ and united us with all his little brothers and sisters. And you have given us a, fa a, a foretaste of the family feasts in your everlasting kingdom. So we say thank you. But even more, we would enact our thanks by conducting our lives in the likeness of Christ and being as generous with others as you have been generous with us, all out of proportion to our having any rightful claim or warrant for such blessings. Make us your people for your glory and the blessing of our neighbors. Amen. In just a second, I will give the benediction, and the choir will sing the benediction response. The annual meeting will start very shortly after that. There will be no postlude. Stay if you can. Leave it as you must. And may God give each one of us that modesty of mind and happiness of heart that enables our soul to fill with the peace that surpasses all understanding in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. You alone, O oh Lord, are holy. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. So we'll give you all a minute if you have to go. And if you're staying, the ushers will pass out the docket for this meeting. We will begin in just a minute.